I would now like to introduce uh, our next speaker, who I'm delighted to say is Tanya Sinclair. She is the Director of Policy um, in the UK, Ireland and the Nordics for ChargePoint. As I'm sure you know, many of you in the audience, ChargePoint is one of the most significant players in the sector. Um, so thanks very much indeed, uh, Tanya, for joining us. Um, Tanya, a first, a first question for you. I understand um, your new UK engineering facility has only been open for three to four months before the lockdown. So uh, firstly, it would be good to cover off how ChargePoint as a global and UK business adapted to the change in working patterns with your um, UK uh, headquarters and your, um, your UK business, sorry, and your HQ in California. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's been a really interesting time. Uh, surprisingly for the majority of the business, actually pivoting to remote working was something that didn't need to take too much effort because a lot of us were already doing it. Um, whether it's in sales or engineering or product development, we're working across not only the US and Europe, but also uh, India as well. So, you know, several time zones involved on a day-to-day -day basis. So for quite a lot of the business, we found it quite easy to then uh, continue that remote working and, and you know, cross-functional communications. Uh, the challenge came, like you say, with our newly opened uh, engineering and R&D uh, facility, which kind of serves as our UK HQ as well. Um, that had been open, yeah, just a few months before we all had to start working from home. But the key to the, the work from home instruction in the UK was that, we had to work from home unless you absolutely couldn't do uh, your work at home. And there were some vital engineering tasks that were business critical that uh, really the kit could not be plugged in at home. It was, you know, specialist lab equipment. And so on working on a safe basis with social distancing and health and safety practices all uh, uh, kind of enforced, we were able to continue some of that work so we didn't uh, have to delay any projects or, or uh, engineering work. I'll get on to, interesting, I'll get on to the green recovery and your, your work as a, as a native policy expert, um, but um, just to ask a sort of simple opening gambit, I mean, are you optimistic or, or pessimistic about employment opportunities in the EV sector? What's your feeling for things? We're, we're really optimistic. Uh, I answered yes to the poll. <laughs> but, but we really see growth opportunities in this sector going forward, um, you know, globally, but specifically in the UK as well. Uh, you know, in, in this industry, we, of course, can run our businesses uh, and grow our businesses. But this whole agenda of e-mobility is, is really at the behest of government and what government chooses to do and how it chooses to incentivize and push forward the the move to into electric vehicles so you know the fact that despite the challenges of the last few months that the government and all of us have been under uh they've continued uh, a, a real kind of drumbeat of policy development that has really given us confidence that you know they mean uh, business when it comes to e-mobility and they really are going to deliver on transitioning the vast majority of, of vehicles uh, to electric in the, in the coming years. And then that gives us the foundation on which to build a, a bigger business. Yeah, very much so. I, I mean, I, I concur. L last week, Green TV hosted the Low Carbon Vehicle Partnership Annual event. Uh, Bob Moran, who wrote the Road to Zero policy document here in the UK, he was extremely bullish about not low carbon vehicles, but zero carbon vehicles. And uh, so, yeah, some very interesting and hopefully uh, positive soundings coming from UK government. Uh, ChargePoint obviously has a large global footprint and I'm sure you have your ear close to the ground in other territories worldwide thinking about the policy framework side of things there. What, what's your sense of things in Europe and back home in the US? Do you concur with Terry that there are some optimistic noises coming out of the US perhaps on the state level but maybe the federal level as well in the future? Yeah, yeah, I completely recognise Terry's um, depiction of, of, of what's going on in the US, you know, charging deserts versus huge pockets of kind of hyperactivity in places like California is a real kind of, um, you know, uh, area of contrast. But, you know, you're seeing lots more good news uh, coming out of particular states. And, you know, Terry mentioned New York being the most recent one. So there's a lot of really good things happening there. Um, in Europe, again, it, there's, there's lots of really strong government-led 
policy development. Um, in France and Germany particularly, their green recovery packages, which were green, uh, unlike the EU's where the sort of green dimensions sort of sort of slip, slip by the wayside and when it was announced today, you know, they were directed, and this is what's really useful and interesting about the packages, they were directed at every part of the value chain. So not just the consumers buying electric vehicles, but also production as well, and also the tax regime. So kind of whether it's the dealerships or uh, the drivers or those building and developing vehicles, there's, there's something for everyone in those packages. And well, you know, what we saw in uh, earlier this month from from the Chancellor in the UK didn't have that. But, you know, we, we still have a baseline of really good incentives and good support for R&D in the UK. So we do have a base to work from. And, and you know, we hope that when we as an industry see that there's support uh, needed going forward into the future to get to all of our climate change targets and so on, that the government will recognise that and, and continue to provide it. Very good. Um, so uh, back home to the UK where you and I are both based, um, you have this general feeling of positivity, but are there any areas of, uh, of concern that you would like to see some renewed policy focus on to support recruitment in the sector? Uh, it's, it's, I think, quite early to tell where we are when it comes to, you know, how the whole economy is going to come out of this crisis. We're still in the crisis. Uh, but when it comes specifically to our business and to ChargePoint, we've talked a lot about uh, green recovery and government support measures. There are two other kind of policy areas that are really going to impact our ability to hire special specialist and, and kind of quality talent and that's um, free trade agreements with the EU and, and the US that are going on at the moment and then also Brexit if anyone's familiar with that <laughs> with that thing so you know both of those are going to have a direct impact on the movement of people and their ability to work and travel between places you know layered on top of the challenges we already have with the crisis so we are really closely monitoring how those two uh, negotiations are, are going to pan out and what that then means for us to be able to recruit, not just in the UK, but all around the world. Very good. So I mean, away from policy, we, back before the crisis, we, uh, we talked a lot about sustainability driving growth in the sector. Um, what do you think the, the forces uh, away from the policy side are that are um, shifting the sector causing growth and perhaps um, a rise in jobs and, and recruitment possibilities? There's, there's a huge range of, uh, of factors, you know, I think the, the general, uh, you know, Jordan mentioned this, the general kind of awareness and public consciousness about electric vehicles is, is getting there, it's rising. Uh, people are aware that electric vehicles exist now, which is somewhere that, you know, when I started out in this industry, we, we certainly didn't have. Um, but, you know, I think what this crisis has also served to do is, especially in London where I live, is, is really underline the importance of, you know, quality of life, air quality and noise quality and so on. And that's really kind of turned people's minds onto uh, you know sustainability issues and not just in their in their day-to-day -day lives but you know in their working lives as well and thinking more and more about how they can uh, move into roles that you know deliver on those uh, ambitions and kind of just make the world a better place basically. I mean perhaps, um, perhaps something for us to consider within the sector you know it's great that the electric vehicle sector is growing, but fewer cars on the road during lockdown made us sort of reframe our sense of what air quality was all about, that wider sustainability piece. So, um, you know, we, we do have to do some thinking around that, I think, within the EV sector, but it certainly has led to a wider narrative around sustainability, which is, I think, positive for, for the growth of what we do. Um, yeah. So, yeah, um, thinking about that, that diverse and balanced workforce approach, what, what sort of initiatives have you put in place at ChargePoint to, to reach out to a wider community of, of people on the recruitment side? Yeah, it's been really interesting hearing, uh, you know, the views from, from the other panellists on this and especially you know, us in this industry, you know, come from, you know, an EV bubble, if I can call it that, you know, we're, 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 we all know one another in this industry, a lot of us have been around in it for, for several years, you know, me looking on 10 years now. Um, I'm actually in charge point quite unusual in terms of being a hire that has come from the EV sector. We really do make efforts to hire from outside the sector, uh, especially when it comes to sort of our sales and marketing kind of roles. And the reason for that is that 
that you know you, you you can become a bit blinkered I think and a bit kind of set in your ways about what you think about this industry and dare I say it you know this is an industry that's moving so quickly you know your views that you held last year are you know out of date and actually you know we need to be thinking forwards to you know two three five years hence and 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 you know pitching that vision to customers and we find that you know a lot of our guys who come from IT or telecoms you know really uh, know how to kind of you know set that vision out without the sort of bias of being worn down by you know going and being part of this industry for for, for years and years so uh, you know we're, from that point point of view we're a really kind of uh, welcome to to you know people from across uh, not just clean tech, but you know other types of technology, and and uh, you know to become part of the ChargePoint team. Yeah, I think if, you know we we've mentioned education. We talked about young people. Th those narratives of sustainability and the digital culture are both ones which really connect with young people, and which young people are super skilled in. So perhaps there are some really interesting opportunities at ChargePoint and other charging infrastructure companies to look to employ more young people. Yeah, definitely. So ChargePoint globally employs uh, almost 800 people, around the 750 mark. Most of those are in the US and then we have uh, teams in India and across Europe as well. Um, our UK team is uh, just under 25 people, uh, half of whom are engineers. So we're, you know, we're at a stage where we can start to grow but look towards developing people as well as just hiring the kind of ready-made skills that that we need as well so you know to be honest it's not something that that we're doing at the moment but it's absolutely something that we're looking to develop as the business grows very good uh, a question from the uh, online community now so uh, daniel, daniel Scharf asks about um whether people in the ev sector are thinking about automated vehicles as part of your internal recruitment strategies are you looking to take on people that have an awareness of that side of things yeah, yeah, we, um, we, we definitely are. And in the US, actually, we have a lot of relationships with um, uh, people and businesses in the cab connected autonomous vehicle sector. Um, I think, uh, you know, we in the charging industry, we have to be really careful not to build our business in isolation from the vehicles, because the vehicles is what we need to, you know, to kind of make our make our business grow. And so we absolutely keep a very close eye on not only the um, the, the products and the uh, technologies that are coming out of that sector, but also the people as well that can help inform how we then develop charging products to match that new generation of vehicles. Very good. Um, a question for me, I mean, this year is a really uh, exciting year for the rise of new electric vehicles. Uh, the VW i3, the Polestar 2, the list goes on and on and on. Um, do you feel that, um, coming back to that education piece with more exciting vehicles, more marketing being done by the OEMs, that this will really raise the game in terms of awareness of EVs that might lead to a growth in the sector and more recruitment opportunities? Yeah, I say, I say it a lot that I do think we'll look back on this period, you know, COVID aside of, you know, sort of 2020, 2021 as, as a time where we really saw a shift in public consciousness and public understanding of electric vehicles. Um, and I think the, the real kind of um, bellwether of this is, is just seeing them sort of online and uh, sort of in public sort of, you know, advertising and so on and in the public consciousness a lot more in a positive way. So, you know, historically, when you were talking about electric vehicles, and I say historically, this is five years ago or so, you know, it would always be with, you know, about the, where am I going to plug it in? Can I get to my destination? So on and so forth. And now with the newer vehicles, they're, they're just so cool. You, you're able to actually have a really positive conversation about how good they are without the, you know, all the kind of traditional sort of, um, you know, anxious consumer kind of, uh, concerns and then i think that in turn has a knock-on effect for people wanting to come and work in this sector as well 